Ever since the end of the Shibuya incident, also known as the last time I made one of these videos, we've met a lot of new, strong characters, and we've also finally gotten some answers on the powers of some characters that we'd been waiting to learn about for a very long time. I think the story is finally at the first point in a while that I can fairly comfortably make a video ranking the top 15 strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen without it immediately becoming outdated in like a week or something. However, if it does, this will specify top 15 as of 2022. Um, now, of course, all of the positions on this list are, in my opinion, based on my own personal analysis and some of the insight of other people, you're welcome to disagree with me. In fact, I encourage you to share your disagreements down in the comments. Just be sure to stay somewhat civil, as I know power scaling arguments can lead to just the most colorful things being shared between people. So then, without any further ado, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get right into this ranking. Rounding out the bottom of this list in the number 15 spot, we have Ishigori Ryu. Ryu's most notable trait is his extremely high cursed energy output, even higher than Yuta Okotsu, who has some of the greatest quantities of cursed energy in the series. Of course, there's a very great difference between quantity and output, but it seems like Ryu may as well be the top dog in terms of output. There are very few characters that explicitly compete with him. Of course, we've only really seen him directly engage in combat with a few people, one of them being Yuta Okotsu himself, but his showings have been incredibly impressive. Along with that incredibly high output, he's able to apply that into his Cursed Energy Reinforcement, allowing him to engage in very efficient hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as defend himself against enemy attacks, and he's able to use it to power up his Granite Blast Technique, a giant ranged attack capable of leveling city blocks and has even greater firepower than the eye beam from Orimoto Rika in her fully manifested form, which needless to say, is a very impressive feat. However, one of the most notable things about Ryu's power is that it does not diminish when his technique is recovering after performing a domain expansion, something that seems to be pretty much unique amongst all Jujutsu Sorcerers we've seen thus far. I guess his cursed energy output can be used almost exactly the same as Granite Blast. It's quite impressive. Anyway, Ryu also has a domain expansion. We don't know what it is, but the fact that he has one tells us that he is capable of defending himself against enemy domain expansions and is capable of engaging in domain battles. In the number 14 spot, I have the Vengeful Spirit of Naoya Zenin. Now, as a Vengeful Spirit, Naoya has a lot of cursed energy, which is able to go into his attacks, and also allows him to heal from most damage very, very quickly. He's one of the fastest characters in the series, one of the few that has actual measured speed feats, being able to reach Mach 3. However, I do not believe that speed was reached using projection sorcery, meaning that he could maybe theoretically have reached speeds significantly higher than that. As for projection sorcery, that allows him to freeze his opponents, but also allows him to freeze the air and effectively create sonic boom attacks, which is quite powerful. And then we get into his domain expansion. Temporal Womb Moon Palace, which allows him to use projection sorcery on a cellular level, meaning that those that are affected by his technique within his domain are torn apart as their cells move or are frozen in completely different ways, meaning that if you're trapped within his domain and have not already used Simple Domain or some sort of other anti-domain technique, you will be ripped apart before you get the chance to do so, making it one of the most dangerous domains in the entire series. In the number 13 spot, I have Jogo, who has a very, very potent combination of incredibly high speed and very high attack power. Jogo is, once again, one of the fastest characters in the series, only outsped by a few, one of them being another projection sorcery user. And as for his actual curse technique, it's pretty much fire, but with a few variations, his ember insects are able to do explosions at range, he's able to summon miniature volcanoes, 
seemingly almost anywhere without even having to touch a surface, which allows him to do incredibly lethal surprise attacks. Then you have his maximum technique, Maximum Meteor. It's a fucking meteor. It can level city blocks. It's incredibly devastating. Then you have his domain expansion, Coffin of the Iron Mountain, in which most normal sorcerers would be instantly incinerated upon entering, because it's a volcano. He also knows domain amplification, which gives him a few more options in combat against some of the trickier opponents he may encounter. However, Jogo does have one weakness, is that he's not very durable. He's very fast, but he has that classic combination of being a bit squishy as well, meaning that he's not able to take very much punishment. However, he is fast enough to avoid most punishment that will come his way. In the number 12 spot, I have Mahito, who I personally consider to be the most powerful, pure, cursed spirit that's not attached to someone else. Mahito's Idol Transfiguration is one of the most powerful curse techniques in the series. It allows him to effectively become unkillable unless you're able to attack the soul directly or you spend enough time to burn out his cursed energy. However, the amount of time or destructive power required to do that would give Mahito plenty of opportunities to use the technique on you in turn. And unless you are very good at defending yourself with cursed energy, you are probably going to die instantly from that, making it incredibly lethal. His own evolution through Black Flash led to him developing Instant Spirit Body of Distorted Killing, a transformation of his body which removes some of his usual shape-shifting but makes his physical power far greater than it usually is, allowing him to contend with Itadori Yuji, one of the most powerful physical fighters in the series. His domain expansion, Self-Embodiment of Perfection, removes the requirement of touching to use Idle Transfiguration, meaning that if you're stuck in there, well, unless you are defending yourself with Simple Domain, cast your own domain, you're gonna die. However, it gets worse, because Mahito figured out how to do a domain expansion in 0.2 seconds, creating the domain and casting the technique simultaneously, meaning you aren't capable of reacting within 0.2 seconds, you're going to be hit before you can do anything to defend yourself, making it a near instant kill for, well, pretty much anyone, including some people that are above him on this list, because they're more powerful, doesn't make Mahito any less lethal. Not to mention, Mahito had some of the greatest potential for growth in the series, meaning if he weren't fortunately snuffed out when he was, he could have gotten even more powerful than we ever saw him. In the number 11 spot, I have Hajime Kashimo, who is, yet again, one of the fastest characters in the series. This is mostly due to his inherent cursed energy properties, those being electricity. Due to the properties of his cursed energy, essentially all of his attacks are sure hit, despite the fact that he does not seem to have a domain expansion. Which means his attacks have incredibly high accuracy and damage, because lightning, without really expending nearly as much cursed energy as you would have to to cast a domain and get sure hit otherwise, not to mention anti-domain techniques are not going to work on his sure hit moves because it's not in a domain. Meaning there aren't very many ways to avoid his sure hit attacks. He does have Hollow Wicker Basket, meaning that even though he doesn't have a domain expansion that we're aware of, and likely doesn't have one at all, he's still able to defend himself should he find himself inside of an enemy domain. His full power with his technique is unknown because we haven't seen his technique yet, but Considering the way Binding Vows work, and the fact that he's only ever able to use his technique once, it's presumably something that will either secure his position here on the list, or put him up somewhere else higher. But I think it's fair for a guy who almost killed an immortal to find himself almost entering the top 10. Speaking of the immortal person, in the number 10 spot, I have Kinji Hakari. His domain expansion, Idle Death Gamble, gives him infinite cursed energy for 4 minutes and 11 seconds. No other character in the series has infinite cursed energy. Yuta comes close with having 
nigh infinite cursed energy. And Gojo technically has it, but that's just because his six eyes always refresh it, so he can't really run out. But Hakari has explicitly infinite cursed energy during this time period. The cursed energy flowing through his body is so overwhelming that it causes him to reflexively use reverse curse technique, despite the fact that he never actually learned how to use it. Meaning that during that time, Hakari is effectively immortal, as any and all injuries will be healed. Missing limbs, torn off faces, none of those things are an issue for him, so long as it's within those 4 minutes and 11 seconds. Now, as you would expect, there are some weaknesses here. He technically can be killed in this state, notably through poison, which Reverse Curse Technique has a hard time dealing with, or by blowing off his head, because the brain is what controls Reverse Curse Technique. However, Hakari is resourceful enough to find ways to deal with these sorts of threats to himself. But this is not where it ends, because due to his cursed energy being infinite during this state, it replenishes in those 4 minutes and 11 seconds after casting his domain. As well as being enough time for his curse technique to recover, meaning that by the time his jackpot ends, he's able to just cast his domain again. And while there is a chance of him not hitting a jackpot and thus not getting infinite cursed energy, he has really ridiculous luck. And his domain is built in such a way that the longer he keeps doing attempts, the higher his chances of getting a jackpot get, to the point where he pretty much has a guaranteed jackpot. Meaning, as long as Hikari keeps fighting and trying to win, he can keep hitting jackpots. And that means he can just keep getting infinite cursed energy, and he can keep casting his domain. Forever. He can just keep going forever. Exhaustion or depleting his cursed energy are not problems for Hakari. He may not have a big explosive technique or any really notably high attack power or something that's super haxed and is an instant kill against his opponents, but in a 1v1 battle against Hakari, you are most certainly going to get worn out before he does, because it's pretty much impossible for him to get worn out unless you use one of the very few ways that can actually kill him during this state. Thus, Hakari earns a spot as number 10 in the top 15 strongest characters. In the number 9 spot, I have Divine General Maharaga. No, I'm not going to say his entire name just for this, but he gets a little bit of epithet as a, as a treat. Maharaga's pretty simple, thank god. He has two main abilities. The first, and most notable one, is his adaptation to any and all phenomenon. If he gets hit with something, he adapts to it and becomes immune to it. This means that if your curse technique isn't incredibly lethal, well, it's never going to kill him if it doesn't immediately, because it'll just never work on him again. This means the only ways to really deal with Maharaga are by hitting him with so many different techniques that he dies before he can adapt to all of them, or hitting him with something so big and explosive that he's instantly obliterated and never gets the chance to adapt. If you can't accomplish those things, you're not going to kill him. The other thing he has going for him is a sword of extermination, a sword coated in positive energy, which means that he can pretty much one-shot any and all curses. That's right, basically an entire chunk of the verse is instantly annihilated by Maharaga. He's just that good. In the number 8 spot, I have Maki Zenin. Through Maki's Heavenly Restriction, which removes all of her cursed energy, she receives superhuman capabilities, incredible enhancements to her reflexes, senses, and physical capabilities. She's capable of recovering from serious injuries within just a few minutes. She can react to attacks coming at her at Mach 3. She can sense differences in the air pressure in order to move in the air by grabbing onto it somehow. And she can move faster than many high-level sorcerers are able to perceive. She was strong enough to solo the Zenin clan one of the three major clans in Jujutsu society, comprised of a number of pretty powerful sorcerers. Now, her lack of cursed energy means that domain expansions do not recognize her as a person, 
And since domains are meant to capture people and just kind of ignore the environment, that means she can pass through domain barriers without any issue. So she cannot be trapped by domains. This does not mean that she is necessarily immune to sure hit effects, as the person casting the domain can command it to attack the environment or specific targets, but that means she doesn't have to worry about getting trapped within a domain. If she fights someone that uses one, she can just leave. And then the person that casts the domain is pretty much screwed because now their domain is useless and they wasted a ton of cursed energy and now have to wait for their curse technique to replenish for nothing. As for Maki's equipment, her current weapon is the Split Soul Katana, which lets her attack the soul directly, meaning that it basically ignores durability. So it doesn't matter how tough you are, Maki can still cut you. In the number 7 spot, I have Suguru Ghetto. His technique, Curse Spirit Manipulation, allows him to absorb and control Curse Spirits of any strength level. However, it does take quite a bit more effort to absorb Curses of higher level strengths, meaning that a lot of the time he has to fight them or let someone else fight them before he can absorb them. The Curse Spirits can be commanded, essentially used as summons, uh, very powerful extensions of himself, or they can be condensed into his maximum technique, Uzumaki, releasing a very large ranged attack that contains all of the combined cursed energy of the spirits within. He was able to do this with over a thousand cursed spirits during the events of Volume Zero, which, as you can imagine, is a very, very big amount of cursed energy for one attack. And as far as we can tell, there's probably not any limit on how many curse spirits you can put in Uzumaki, because it doesn't seem like there's an actual limit to how many curse spirits he can absorb. During the events of Volume Zero, he had a few thousand, but it seems like Kenjaku is able to absorb a few million using his technique. So the limits for what Ghetto can do with curse spirit manipulation kinda don't exist. He basically doesn't have a ceiling for what he's capable of. The only limits are limits that come about because of his personality, who he is, his own decision-making, poor strategic choices, the sort of usual things that limit really broken characters. In addition to that, more broken, he's able to absorb the cursed techniques from the cursed spirits that he takes into himself for one-time use applications, meaning that he is capable of having more than one curse technique. In addition to that, he's fairly skilled in physical combat and at one point possessed Playful Cloud, a very powerful special grade weapon, the strength of which increases depending on the strength of the user, meaning that it was pretty strong in Ghetto's hands, but I think there's at least one person that it was much more powerful in the hands of. In the number six spot, I have Toji Zenin. He has pretty much the same base stats as Maki, as far as we can tell, so I'm not going to go over those again. However, he did have more experience in combat, specifically against sorcerers, than Maki, and he has quite a bit more equipment. In addition to the Split Soul Katana, he has a chain of a thousand miles, a chain that can extend forever so long as one of its ends are obscured, the Inverted Spear of Heaven, which is capable of nullifying any cursed technique, including the Infinity, and Playful Cloud which scales to the user's strength. And since Toji has superhuman strength, that means that in his hands, Playful Cloud is capable of annihilating pretty much anything he hits with it. Just look at what it was doing to Dagon and his Shikigami. His hidden inventory curse allowed him to keep all of his weapons on him, on the go, whenever he needed them, and was incapable of being detected by barriers due to Toji keeping it within his stomach. Finally entering the top five, the five most powerful characters in the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen, we have Yuki Tsukumo here in the number five spot. Her curse technique, which has a bunch of different names if you want to go with the shitty Viz translation of Star Rage, or Bambaye, or Wrath of the Star, allows her to apply virtual mass to herself and her Shikigami slash curse tool Garuda. This means that she can apply more mass to herself without actually behaving any differently, 
So while she still moves like a normal person with a normal person's weight would, she can hit something with the force of like a freight train, which means that she can make her attacks powerful enough to one-shot special grade curses created from Asian deities or completely blow through the defenses of a special grade sorcerer like Kenjaku. It's apparently so potent that it can ignore concepts or conceptual abilities. Uh, this is a very vague description of how powerful she is. You can interpret it as much as you want. I interpret it as meaning if you have just some kind of hacks ability, she can just punch through it. It, it just doesn't matter. It's just that good. Now, this is something that wasn't directly mentioned in the series at all, I think. Um, in fact, I'm fairly confident it wasn't mentioned at all, but something that should be taken into consideration, due to the mass that Yuki applies to herself being virtual and not really having any signs of being applied, that means that Yuki can use her technique without letting you know that she's using it, and can also not use it while you think that she is. Meaning that when you're fighting her, you have no idea if a punch from her is going to have the force of a normal cursed energy reinforced punch, or if it's going to have the force that could, I don't know, level a skyscraper or something. Meaning that the psychological aspects of her technique are terrifying. In addition to that, she has reverse curse technique, allowing her to heal herself from very serious injuries. She has simple domain and a domain expansion of her own, though we don't know what it was. However, this means that she's able to defend herself against enemy domains and can engage in domain battles if need be. If the need arises, she can apply virtual mass to herself or theoretically Garda beyond the limits of her curse technique, not increasing density. And once she cra uh, passes that threshold, she can apply enough mass to herself to turn into a black hole capable of destroying the planet, meaning that she is the first character in the series to have an explicit planetary level feat. Congratulations. That's fucking insane. In the number four spot, I have Yuta Kotsu. Yuta has a few things going for him. The first of which is that he has nigh unlimited cursed energy. This means that it's theoretically possible for him to run out, but he has such an ungodly amount that it's incredibly unlikely that such a thing would ever happen. He's also very skilled with reverse curse technique, not only being able to heal himself, but also apply it to others, including offensively against cursed spirits, meaning, much like with Maharaga, cursed spirits are basically nullified by Yuta. His main power is that of the remaining power of Rika Orimoto, who is able to assist him in battle very similarly to a Shikigami, as well as serving as a storage device for copied curse techniques and curse tools. Speaking of copy and curse techniques, whenever Yuta dons his ring, he is allowed to fully manifest Rika for five minutes, during which he is able to use any techniques that he has copied as well as use curse tools from Rika. The requirements for his copying are not known. However, according to Kenjaku, it is unconditional copying of techniques. I assume he has to know of the technique, or at least see the technique. That's kind of what I'm going off. I assume that's really the only condition as far as we're aware. Ryu thinks it was Rika eating Uro's arm that allowed him to copy the sky manipulation, but that was just Ryu thinking that because he couldn't comprehend a person being able to copy entire techniques without any conditions. Because it's ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. It's an incredibly broken power. It's why Yuta's in the number four spot on this list. But that's not all. In addition to all of that, Yuta has a domain expansion. We don't know what it does, but we know that we, he has one, which means he can defend himself against enemy domains and engage in domain battles if need be. It's not clear if he has to be wearing the ring and in that five minute state to use his domain, kind of seems like he might have to. Either way, he's broken enough as it is. In the number three spot, we have Kenjaku. It seems like Kenjaku's own original power is body swapping, switching his brains between bodies. 
However, he doesn't just do that. To some extent, he's able to bring the curse techniques of his hosts along with him to his next host. His current primary ability within the body of Suguru Ghetto is Curse Spirit Manipulation, meaning he has all of those insane powers I talked about when I talked about Ghetto, as well as some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. He also took the anti-gravity system technique from Kaiori Itadori, which he frequently utilizes with Curse Technique Reversal, turning it into a gravity system, I guess. He may have more than one technique that we haven't seen already. That potential does exist. At the moment, we do not know what exactly it is. He's also skilled in using reverse curse technique, able to heal himself from grievous injuries such as having his arms blown up. His domain expansion, all enveloping God Haratu, doesn't seem to have a really clear effect like a lot of other ones do. However, it is a barrierless domain, and it allows him to use likely any of his techniques of his choice sure hit with an increased effect as he does with the curse technique reversal of the anti-gravity system according to tengen he is the second best barrier user in the verse he has a very powerful simple domain that's on another level whatever that means for a simple domain he can dismantle other people's simple domains just because they're in his domain and he can cast his domain with such precision that it only surrounds his own body, which would then make it the smallest domain in the entire series. Presumably, he also knows domain amplification as he was the one that taught it to Jogo and Hanami. In the number two spot, I have Ryomen Sukuna who, I haven't said this in a while, is one of the fastest characters in the series, able to pretty much speed blitz Jogo, who, you know, is another one of the fastest characters. He's able to dodge Maximum Meteor without any real difficulty. Cleave and Dismantle are the two main techniques of his that we're most knowledgeable on, and they allow him to pretty much eviscerate his opponents in a variety of ways of his choosing. He also has an unnamed fire technique that is stronger than Jogo's fire, which is Jogo's whole shtick, and was capable of instantly destroying a fairly damaged Maharaga. And it's quite possible that he has some other techniques we haven't seen yet. He probably has some sort of external storage. Maybe it's those tattoos he has, or something else. His actual own singular technique is still a mystery. There's a theory that he gains people's techniques from eating them, I would buy it, but we don't have any confirmation on that yet, so I can't say. His domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, is a barrierless domain with a range of 200 meters, making it the biggest domain we've seen thus far. However, Sukuna can choose to shrink that domain if he wishes, though this seems to increase its potency. As we've seen thus far, the primary ability of Malevolent Shrine is casting Cleave and Dismantle on pretty much everything within its radius effectively disintegrating everything within by cutting it up into atoms. His full power remains a mystery, as all of the insane things that he's done thus far have only been at around 75% of his power, and even then he was not trying very hard. However, safe to assume he's still going to be somewhere very close to the top whenever we see everything that he's capable of. In the number one spot, to the surprise of literally zero people, because he's explicitly the top of the verse, we have Satoru Gojo. Gojo's technique is infinity, or limitless, whatever you want to call it. The basic form of the infinity surrounds Gojo with a barrier which slows down anything that gets closer to him, slowing things down to a point at which they effectively stop, meaning that basically nothing can touch him. There are a few variations of Infinity, including Blue, which causes matter to be pulled together and crushed, and Red, which propels matter and sends it flying far away in giant blasts. There's also something that's maybe his maximum technique, which is Hollow Purple, which creates an imaginary mass that deletes pretty much everything that it touches. His domain expansion, Immeasurable Void, overloads the brain with information, meaning that just being in his domain will kill you. I do not think this is something that anti-barrier techniques can 
help with. I don't think simple domain would save you from this. I don't think casting your own domain would save you from this. This just seems to be a passive effect of the environment inside of his domain, much like the volcano environment of Coffin of the Iron Mountain, which is really, really broken. But it gets more broken because it's Gojo. All of these techniques, as you would imagine from how broken they are, use up a lot of cursed energy. And Gojo has a lot of cursed energy, but he basically uses none of it because the six eyes reduce the amount of cursed energy he uses for his techniques to essentially zero, meaning that he can spam all of his super broken as shit techniques infinitely forever. In addition to that, if theoretically, even if he weren't using any of his cursed energy, it's still possible that Gojo, using all of these techniques all the time, constantly, would wear him out. It would tire him out physically. But Gojo knows reverse curse technique, and he applies it to himself constantly. So he's always at his physical best, constantly refreshed, never tired, never exhausted. So it's basically impossible to wear Gojo out in a battle of attrition. So he has the most powerful attacks in the series, pretty much. He has a technique that makes him pretty much untouchable. And uh, he can never get tired. And if he casts his domain, you're just going to die in there. Gojo's the best because, well, he's just broken. He he's broken. He breaks all of the rules. There are no restrictions upon Gojo, really. The only restrictions Gojo has are the restrictions he places upon himself. It's basically the only reason he got thrown in the prison realm. And it's the reason why whenever he gets out of there, well, you know, the story's going to be over. Just like how this video is now over, because that's the end of the list. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reactions and reviews every week that we get a new chapter. If you guys liked this video, if you had any disagreements with it, please be sure to share them down in the comments. I'd be very happy to hear them. And if you want to have more in-depth discussions with me personally, either on this video or on really anything Jujutsu related or on anything in general, such as the other series I cover on this channel, I have a Discord server. You should check it out. It's, it's linked down in the description. It's a pretty nice place. That's all, folks. Until next time, I'll see you all around. Take care.